Hello, good evening, welcome to Prague Chattery 777. We're talking about Gentle Giant, we've made it to their third album, and guess what? For their third album, they just reused the first album cover. Uh, this is for the uh, American release, the North American release. There's, I think there's a different album cover that you can get, but it's hard to find over here in Canada that does have an alternate album cover. Um, and it doesn't really make sense because there's been a lineup change and we have a picture of the original band who had a different drummer. Um, the original drummer, Martin Smith, was replaced by Malcolm Mortimer. Um, it was quite a good drummer. Um, I, I, I'm not a huge, huge fan of the drumming on the first two Gentle Giant albums. I mean, obviously, acquiring the taste is brilliant. Um, but pra Plain Truth, for example, on that album, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm the best drummer in the in the universe, but every time I hear Plain Truth, I think, I would play that so much differently. Um, but again, you know, the bands playing the, that kind of heavy bluesy rock with the odd time signatures was kind of a new thing, right? And uh, you know, the, the drummers were kind of just along for the ride in a lot of cases. Uh, in Gentle Giant's case, they were anyway for those early albums. Um, so yeah, that's the only change that we've had lineup-wise. We still have Derek Shulman, Ray Shulman, and Phil Shulman, the Shulman brothers. Um, we've still got Carrie Veneer, and we've still got Gary Green. So that, that's kind of the, the core of the band. And said drummers, they were still they were still <laughs> trying to figure that out. Um, so they they established themselves as you know definitely one of those you know far-reaching experimental kind of bands. You know they weren't too concerned with um, commerciality or writing commercial songs. Much more interested in creating you know interesting music and challenging themselves and challenging the audience and just trying to find new ways to to be a band. Um, they did so with very interesting musical complex arrangements uh, and by using all of their talents to play multiple you know, different instruments, they, they, you know, they pulled out all the stops and, you know, created something really, really unique. And so when they got to their third album, um, they thought the next thing, a good idea, would be to make it a concept album. Um, you know, which is great. I, I, it's, I've got nothing against concept albums. I'm just not totally sold on the concept on this album. I think musically, musically it's really, really good. I don't think it's, I don't think the music on here is quite as good as the music on acquiring the taste. Um, but I mean, I think that's just because they were more focused on putting the concept together. Um, and the concept is, is about three friends that, um, you know, they're very close when they're in school and everything's, you know, honky dory, and they're, you know, they pass time and good friendship and goodwill and that and. Uh, um, they grow up, the one friend becomes a, you know, blue collar or a, like a construction kind of a worker. The one friend becomes an artiste and uh, the other one becomes like a, your blue collar businessman kind of a guy. And uh, because their careers go into different paths, they, they no longer can relate to each other. And, and that's it. So, yeah, it, it, it's a simple concept, and, you know, I guess that, that makes sense. They're not going to do something totally convoluted right off the bat, but I, I just, I'm not totally sold on the on the concept. But there is some great music to it. The concepts are illustrated here on the inner sleeve. we got uh, school days and uh, friends, and there's the, there's the construction worker, there's the painter, there's the, the blue-collar guy. Yeah. It's cool. Uh, let's take a look at the songs, shall we? Only six songs on the album. It's a pretty short album. Uh, side one opens with Prologue, which uh, I think is a really excellent little piece of Gentle Giant music. A great intro for the album. Um, we're introduced to Mortimer's drumming. Much, he's a much smoother player, I think. You know, he, he, can, he can lock into a groove, but he's, he's a light hitter as well. Softer, but smoother kind of a drummer. Um, and he, he does some great roles, great fills on Prologue. Really cool, it, you know, it, it's mainly instrumental. A couple of quick verses sung by Phil that kind of set up the story, uh, introduce the three friends. Um, and then it, it kind of goes into this neat little middle section where they add little, you know, each instrument adds its little line as it goes along. It starts out just with the drums and a little, um, uh, cross sticking technique the bass is there and then you know synth line here guitar line here another synth line here 
and it all kind of builds up into this this neat little thing. And then it all winds its way back up to the main theme, and and uh, off we go to the next song. So prologue's a good intro. Uh, track two of side one, we get School Days. This is this is probably the best song on the album, I think. Uh, it's got those really complex arrangements that obviously they were they had established on the previous uh, album and probably advanced them. Um, the, the vocals, the way that, uh, I believe it's Carrie Minear and Phil Shulman that kind of double up on the vocals. And those verses are really, really, you know, fantastic. The way, you know, dun, 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 you know the, the way they pass the voices off. And then musically, the arrangement is, the arrangements are mind-bogglingly complex. Uh, very, very, very well arranged. And it goes into, there's three kind of distinct sections to it, so you get the really complex bit at the beginning, and then it kind of chills out and goes into this slower piano-led kind of bit. We get a Carrie Minear, uh, long Carrie Minear vo uh, vocal bit, a verse. Uh, we also get a fourth Shulman, I believe it was Phil Shulman's uh, young lad, sang the schoolboy voice, which is quite cool, that's a neat, neat little effect. Um... And then it winds its way back into the fast-paced beginning. I love, I love the little jazzy section. Uh, you know, it's it's quite dramatic, and all that. Like the the piano verse, the carry verse is all dramatic, and then you get love that. I think that that is a classic bit of early gentle giant music. The highlight of the highlight moment of the album. And I really like the acoustic bit, uh, just that. That's an electric guitar that does that. Um, you know, School Days is it's it's a highlight uh, highlight bit. Great, 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 great. Uh, then we move into Working All Day. So this is a song that talks about the construction friend. Construction friend. <laughs> uh, the friend that goes into construction. Uh, and it's... Uh, yeah, I, I, it probably would have benefited from coming before School Days, because School Days is this really, really cool piece. Uh, working All Day is kind of this you know slow-paced, kind of sludgy song. Um... It's got a cool guitar line that, that runs through it, and the horns are really cool that go through it as well. I like the bow, 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 that comes a couple of times. Uh, it's kind of, it's got a big instrumental bit in the middle with some soloing, um, courtesy of Minear, I believe, on the keyboards. Um, and it all, it winds its way, winds its way back. Strong vocal performance by Derek Shulman. Um, yeah, he's, he was really, really good at the, the hard rock voice. Um, and yeah, this, this is a good example of it. The first time we actually hear Derek on this album is working all day. When we flip the album over, we get side two. Opens with Peel the Paint. Now, this is a pretty famous song, I think. This is quite a famous giant song. Um, opens with this kind of mysterious uh, violin lead. He's plucking the strings... Uh, violin and bass. Phil Shulman on the vocals. Um, there's kind of there's kind of a quiet menace to the start, uh, which is appropriate because eventually it winds its way into this big, big, heavy uh, super blues. Do 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 do. Uh, <laughs> great stuff. I, I keep I keep humming all the music instead of describing it or talking to you. I guess I'm talking to you. Anyway, less said the better. Uh, yeah, so when, when it goes from the, the quiet bit to the heavy bit, we get Derek, who takes over on the vocals. And again, such a really strong, heavy, masculine performance, which is, uh, you know, suits the song perfectly. Um, then the song kind of makes its way into a crazy uh, drum bash with guitar solo, complete with guitar solo, uh, which is lots of fun. Um, I'm not as big a fan of that because, you know, when I, when I get into General Giant, I think about how tightly arranged everything is, and, uh, you know, they have this this quite tightly arranged piece, and then it just kind of goes into into craziness, which is, it's just cool. I mean, I like that in certain certain applications, but, you know, when I'm listening to General Giant, I'm, I'm, I, I like, 
I like hearing for the, oh my goodness, there's sounds about, <laughs> when I'm listening to Channel Giant, I like uh, listening to those arrangements and those, those detailed uh, performances. Uh, and then the, the drum bash works its way back into the song, and, and there we go. Uh, then Peel the Paint, after that we get uh, track two, a side two, uh, Mr. Class and Quality. This is another contender for best song on the album. I'm a really big fan of this. Uh, I think it's uh, it, it's a sign of what's to come with uh, the kind of... It's a harder rocking song. It's got this uh, nice kind of fast-paced shuffle that leads it along. And... Um, you know, the, all, all the hocketing techniques and the instruments bouncing off of each other, I mean, that that's all really well in place, and that's all happening on top of this really steady groove. Um, lots of, you know, kind of unexpected twists and turns. Um, obviously, this song is talking about the, the businessman friend. Uh, really love the violin line. I really love that. Quite cool. In the uh, intro to Mr. Class and Quality, um, it's kind of weird but tightly arranged bass and keyboard part. It's hard to do that one because again, you know, eat, you follow one instrument for a while and then the melody kind of gets passed off to the next instrument. It I guess this, this is how complicated their music is. There's there's a lot of a lot of detail there. But the intro to Mr. Class and Quality ends up being the uh, main theme for Three Friends, the closing title track, which is, it's almost like a piece of church music, really, and you get this really dramatic choir vocal, which I think is fantastic. Um, and that, that riff, I mean, there's almost like a, there's almost something sacred about that, uh, that sound. It, it's... It, it's churchy, you know what I mean? When that, when that song kind of comes on, it's like, we all, everyone, be quiet, be quiet. And then, you know, compose yourself, cross your arms, and and, and feel churchy. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I actually really, really like the title track, the, the closing song. It's very grand. I've got memories memories of being really into that when I was in high school, and I was, I was trying to read uh, Lord of the Rings. Fellowship of the Ring, and, and I, mean, I, was, I was more interested in Gentle Giant, so I, I don't think I actually made it all the, way, all the way through it. But Three Friends, the the music behind the title track, Three Friends, was in my head as uh, as Sam and Frodo were trudging across the the landscape of Middle Earth, uh, and I think that fits. I think it. Uh, <laughs> there's something about Gentle Giant music and a lot of the the 70s prog stuff that was around at the time that fits Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it's the nerdery. It's the the nerdery of it all. Uh, so yeah, that that's it for for three friends. Like I like I said, it's uh, it's a good album. Uh, I like acquiring the taste better. Um, but I think this is better than the debut. I think there I think this is this is there's more stuff on here that's typical of Gentle Giant than there is on the self titled first record. Um, and you know, if you're a fan of the band, it's it's pretty essential. I mean, there's a couple of moments on there. Obviously, school days is a is an essential giant moment, and so is Mr. Class and Quality. I think I, I'll say Peel the Paint because I know there's a lot of people that really really like that song. I'm not as big a fan of it, um, but you know, it's good. It's all good. It's Gentle Giant, of course. It's good. They're a great band. So. You just heard me talk about three friends. Stay tuned next time for this is the other biggie. Octo Opus. Octopus. We'll see you then.